Hello, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to show you how you can dual boot antics in Windows 11. So let's just get started. So for starters, uh, I'm going to grab Wentoy. So let's just write Wentoy into our search bar and click on the first link and just download it. Go to downloads. It doesn't matter which part you click. It just gives you it just gives you the same link and then select Windows here. Okay. Let's just put it on our desktop. Okay. It's saved. It's a really small file, so you can just easily download it. After that, let's just grab Antics. So the first link again. Okay, let's click on Downloads. Now this part is a little bit tricky because these are all Antics, as you can see. These are all links that you can download Antics in. Uh, now, first starters, is if you're not really working with a really old PC, just don't choose the 32-bit option. Uh, the 64-bit would be a lot better for you. If I'm just saying uh, this again, if your PC is not really old and if you're sure that it does not support 64-bit, don't go for 32-bit. Uh, and also pay attention to this part. So this is the network installer. This is the basic, like there's no extra pro uh, programs or anything, like even a desktop environment. So you can't really interact with anything with this um, unless you actually put up a desktop environment. It will be just a terminal. So I would uh, prefer either the full version or the base version. I think you should just choose either one of them if you're not really into Linux that much. So we're just going to go with the full version and you choose the SysVinit version since that's the flagship version. Uh, you could still choose Renit but they recommend this version so I'm going to go with that. So we're going to download this version. So I already got it downloaded. I have it in my download so I'm not going to do that but just let this finish. Uh, for you. So after that, let's just close out of our web browser and uh, let's get into our downloads. There it is, the Antix ISO. Let's just move that in our desktop for easier access. So these are the files that we're working with, these new files. So let's just uh, grab our USB drive. I already have it plugged in here, as you can see. Uh, it should be like a 7 gigs uh, minimum. For your USB drive for this process, so keep that in mind. So let's just extract when toy. There we go. Let that finish. There we go. And then let's open up the when toy application. You're just gonna click on this and run this as admin. Click on yes. And there we go. We have this program. So just select your USB drive here. Pay attention if that's the correct one because it's going to wipe everything from it. So let's just click on yes and yes again. And it's just doing its thing right now. And it's done. It's that basic. And then what we're just going to do is right click on our ISO and just paste that into this empty space here in our USB drive. So I click on paste and let this copy. Whilst this is copying, uh, we're just gonna give Antics some space in our drive. So I'm gonna right click on this Windows icon and then click on Disk Management. Okay, let that open. Okay, this is our USB drive and this is our internal storage. So this is where the Windows is installed. This is recovery partition and this is the boot partition of Windows. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to split this partition into half so that we can have storage for antics. So we're going to right click on this and click on shrink volume. And then it just gives us 
meg it just shows this in megabytes you can just uh, use like a converter in your mobile phone or anything to uh, see how much you want to do well, let's, how much we want to do though let's give about like yeah, 26 gigs. That's that's good enough. Okay, almost equal. But Antics is gonna take up less storage, so that's a better choice, I guess. To just give it a little bit less storage than Windows. So that's finished, and let this finish too. It's almost done. And after that, we're just gonna reboot into the Antics ISO file, and. It's almost done. Yeah, it's done. No, it's not. <laughs> I for sure it's done. It's like the progress bar here it looks like it's done. Okay, now it's done. Okay, and let's just close everything in the system. I mean there's not much stuff running anyways, but whatever. And let's just reboot our system. Now I'm gonna press the escape key. I'm gonna press the escape key to access my BIOS, but you could be pushing any of the function keys in your keyboard. So try any of them if you uh, can't boot up into this boot manager in your system. So we're just gonna select the USB drive here. Okay. And there we go, we just have only the antics here, as we expect. And just click on normal mode and continue. Okay, we're booted up into the ISO right now. So here we're just gonna click on installer. Uh, I'm gonna skip this check, but I recommend you do this for your system because if there's any problem in the ISO file, you will know that. I already checked that, so there's no need to do it twice. So we're not gonna choose the regular installer, we're just gonna go for the customized disk layout. So let's click next. And here, let's just pay attention to what we did uh, back in the Windows session. So here, uh, find your, oh, first, of course, we just need to go use, yeah. Here, in this uh, Gparted, you just click on this little icon and you open up this Gparted. Here, you just find what your uh, Windows installation is. And that's this part here, 37 gigs. That's what your Windows installation is installed on. So we're gonna install this in here, our Antics Linux installation. So let's just click on new in here. And for starters, I'm gonna create a boot partition for Antics, a separate boot partition from our Windows installation. So I'm just gonna give this like 100 megabytes or, yeah, let's go for 100 meg. That should be more than enough. Okay, and we're just gonna select FAT32, partition name, label, okay, here. Just, what does it say? Here it says boot.afi, so we're just gonna do that. If uh, you're not using UFI boot, don't do this just skip this step altogether so keep that in mind just skip this don't even do this uh, if you're using an older system or anything just skip that okay that's done so after that we're just going to click on new into the other leftover space and we're just going to select ext4 and give this label of this and done so select apply And let this just partition the whole thing. <laughs> We're doing some Windows 95 stuff here. 
or Windows XP. They all did this. This compositors are really interesting. Okay. Okay, it's finished. And let's just close out this Gparted program. And now we can see that there is ext4 here. So let's just get this. Well, you can just copy this. This is going to be your system partition. And this part, the 100 megabyte one, this is going to be your boot partition. Just like I told this again, you don't actually need this in a legacy boot system. But for U5 systems, this is kind of really necessary. So yeah, keep that in mind. So we're just going to well, let's format this again and click on next start and now it will start doing it and here uh, is where it could just like install it for MBR that's for legacy boot uh, I think that's also for legacy but this is for new UFI boots so we're gonna select like that we can create a swap partition oh no this is a swap file if you want and I want hibernation so we're just gonna select hibernation and continue you can just select the computer name let's just call it antex1 why not and let's select our time zone well, I like the PM style uh, I don't think I have Bluetooth on this VM so I'm not gonna get Bluetooth here you can select any module you like to just disable you can uh, turn them on afterwards if you like or turn them off afterwards as well so let's continue let's just give it a name a really secure password uh, no need for a root user continue and it's almost finished right now right I didn't even have to pause the video or anything <laughs> You can also see the like the log files of here. So if there's an error message, just look through this. And if you're gonna uh, search anything, just copy these logs so that people can help you better. Because most likely the error message would be obvious here. So it copied everything. It's just yeah, it's updating in it from OS. So I'm doing that. I'm gonna pause this I guess yeah. okay it's finished let's click on finish it just straight up rebooted our system now it's just gonna give us a boot selector I'm assuming yes now we can select Windows or Antix from here I'm gonna select Antix right now to see if it's installed properly And as you can see, let's just write our username and how do we go down to the password? Okay, there we go. As you can see, it's installed perfectly fine. It's working perfectly. That's just like open up DOS box. That's pre-installed. That's hilarious in my opinion. So like, let's open up a real terminal here. Where's the terminal emulator in this? Oh, that's the text editor, but yeah. Oh, there it is. Terminal. What's the name of the terminal? No, rocks terminal. Okay, cool. Finished off. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. Yeah, and it's really minimal. Like, look at that. That's not almost using anything. And also our swap partition is correctly created as well. So we could use this hibernation function here. Where is that? Uh, right over here. So you can use that as well. So yeah, it's perfectly functional. You can move the icons around anything. So let's go inside Windows and see if it's still functioning or it's just completely ruined. Oh, that's restarting the re session. We're gonna reboot the session or 
Robert Tall OS, I guess. Okay, select Windows from the boot manager. Oh, and look at that. Windows is booting. Let's see if it's functioning still. And as you can see, it's just booting up to our system. So I think this is a whole system setup. It was a success. As you can see, everything's where we left it. So now you can just delete these files if you like. So let's just put them in the garbage bin and yeah. That was all. Thanks for watching.